Good morning. I am Pastor Arthur Benjamin, a senior pastor of Love of Christ Fellowship Church. Welcome to our Sunday morning message, our video message. Uh, for those of you who are at home, unable to attend our Sunday morning service, thank you so much for tuning in and chiming in. Uh, we're going to be studying the Word of God this morning as a church family. Um, there's so much going on in the world around us. There's so much going on uh, globally around the coronavirus, but we praise God that our God is still in control. He's still on the throne, and, and God's Word is still true. And so we're honored to be able to gather uh, this morning and to study His Word. Uh, we're going to be looking this morning at the book of Matthew, uh, chapter number six. We're going to be looking at the Sermon on the Mount, and we're going to be talking uh, from the subject this morning, uh, making God's will priority one. Making God's will priority number one. And so turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter six. We're going to be looking at verses 25 to 34. Matthew, chapter number six verse 25 to 34, and it reads, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly father knows what you need. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough worry of its own. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Lord, for this day and for the opportunity you give us to sit at your feet and to break bread. We thank you, Father, that your word is infallible. Your word is a lamp unto our feet. Your word is a light to our path. Uh, your word gives us counsel, gives us direction. Speak to our hearts, we pray, and we will forever give your name praise. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we take a look this morning at the Sermon on the Mount, there are a couple of things that I think are important for us to meditate on or to contemplate or think about as it relates uh, to Jesus's message. As we look at Matthew chapter number six, there are a couple of things that I think we want to pay attention to. On my first slide, you'll see that there are a couple of things that have to do um, with some of the importance that Jesus gives around priority. Some of the importance that Jesus gives around priority is seen in Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 25 to 27. And he talks about the importance of overcoming or the priority of overcoming anxiety. That, that, that when we look at worry and fear and doubt, there is a priority that God's will gives us to overcome anxieties. Now, right now we are in uh, probably one of the worst pandemics that we've ever seen um, in our lifetime. This is global. It is, it, there, there is not a, a nation that is not touched or impacted by um, what is going on with the coronavirus. And yet God's message still rings true to us as believers to not worry, to not have fear, to not have anxiety, to not doubt, but to trust that God who sits on the throne is in control. 
that God who sees and knows it all is there and available to us as we pray and as we trust and as we believe him. The second point that we see in the Sermon on the Mount is the experiencing of the, pro, of the providential care of God. That's in Matthew chapter 6, verses 28 to 32. And it is important for us to remember as we look at what is going on around us that God does care that God does care about us. He cares about our health. He cares about our well-being. He cares about how we are doing in the world around us. And the third priority that we see in the Sermon on the Mount is, is the importance of seeking first the kingdom of God as we see in Matthew chapter six, verse 33 and 34. So we have this reflection of overcoming anxiety experiencing the providential care of God, and then the importance of seeking God's kingdom first. When we look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, this importance of seeking God's kingdom, I want us to, to take the, the next step into the study of this passage by, by really looking at um, what does seeking the will of God involve? What does it look like or, or what does it mean to seek the will of of God. One of the first points I want to point out as we look at the next slide uh, is seeking the will of God involves our understanding of the reign of God. In order for us to fully and truly accept and embrace um, the, the priority of seeking God's will, we must give preferential treatment or preference to the reign and rule of God in, the, in our lives as believers. In Matthew chapter 6, as I read earlier, verse 33, we're going to read it again. Matthew 6, 33 uh, says for us, but seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. All of these things will be given to you as well. So in, 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 in order for us to really take note of the reign of God, it is important for us to make seeking God and his kingdom, the power of his kingdom, as our number one priority. Trusting that God really is who he says that he is. And he really can do what he says he can do. On last Sunday, we talked about God's ability to preserve and protect those that are his. We looked at Psalm 91, and Psalm 91 gives us this reflection um, or this declaration that a thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. Only with my eyes shall, shall I behold and see the, the reward of the wicked. And so it is important for us as New Testament believers, as Christians in this hour and this day, to make God's throne, God's dwelling place, seeking God our number one priority. And that involves understanding God's rulership and reign. So if we have given our lives to Jesus, if we have fully embraced uh, our salvation, then Christ becomes Savior and Lord for us. He becomes Savior and Lord for us. And, and, and Christ doesn't just come to save us from our sin. He comes to redeem us and to purchase us and bring us into the family of God, into fellowship with Almighty God, so that we experience the blessings that come with being his children. So the first one of seeking the will of God involves the reign of God or understanding the reign of God. The next point in my second PowerPoint uh, is in, it involves the duty of discipleship, the duty of discipleship. It is God's will that we listen to his son as true disciples of Jesus Christ. Turn with me to Matthew chapter number 17, verse number five. Matthew chapter number 17, verse number five. Matthew 17, verse 5 says, While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am pleased. Listen to him. 
Now, this takes place at the Mount of Transfiguration. This takes place when Jesus um, transfigures before uh, some of his disciples and, and God chooses to speak to the disciples about the role his son is about to play in the earth. And he speaks these words of affirmation. This is my son whom I love. In him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. It is important for us to understand that as true disciples of Jesus Christ, we have a responsibility to obey our Savior. True disciples operate in obedience to the Son who has redeemed our life from destruction. Jesus has all authority and he desires that we become his disciples according to Matthew 28 verse 18 to 20. Let's look at Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. And we know most of us know this verse. We usually call it the Great Commission, but I wanna just read it for you. Matthew 28, 18 to 20 says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them, teaching them, listen, to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age." In order for you and I to be true, authentic disciples of Jesus Christ, to fully embrace, to fully seek God's will, we, we, we must be willing to surrender to the voice of God in full obedience to him. Now, I'm tempted to ask you, when was the last time you thought about your obedience to God? When was the last time you considered the word of God, and where your life was being positioned around his word. The interesting thing for God and his word is God never asks us to be obedient only in the things that are easy. God often calls us to be obedient in the areas that are also very difficult. It may be of our forgiveness of a loved one. It it could be uh, our ability to apologize or maybe even our ability to to share our faith with someone that we may not feel is worthy or we may feel afraid to be judged. Whatever that, that obstacle is that keeps us from fully obeying God, it is important for us as true disciples of Jesus Christ to really take hold and to take Um, the importance of stepping into obedience so that our lives are transformed and we are found to be his. We're found to be his. All right. The next PowerPoint we want to talk about, which our third point has to do, uh, involves with the role of the church in seeking God's will. The role of the church with seeking God's will. Jesus came to establish his church in Matthew 16, 18. In Matthew chapter 16, verse number 18, we're going to look at it really quick. Matthew 16, 18 says, let's get it here. There it is. He says, I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Jesus speaks to Peter as Peter declares Christ as the Messiah, as he declares Christ as being uh, the one that they have been waiting for, Jesus doesn't make the distinction that Peter is the person that he will build his church, but it is upon the revelation that he is the Christ that becomes the, the foundation. The Bible says the chief cornerstone. Jesus is the cornerstone um, of, the, of the body, of the church. And so as we look at the role of the church when it comes to seeking God, we find that as New Testament Christians, as we involve ourselves in community, as we involve ourselves in godly relationships, then it makes it easy for us to hear the voice of God and to seek out the voice of God as we have fellowship and as we have relationship with one another. That is vitally important for us as we're looking to seek out the will of the Father. 
Now, there are a couple of points I want to point out before I end my message this morning that have to do with prioritizing God's will. We just talked about what things play a role in seeking God, but how do we prioritize? Once we seek the Lord and we understand his will and we hear God's voice speaking to us through his word, speaking to us through our community, speaking through us through our relationships, how do we prioritize and keep that as a priority in our lives? All of us run the risk of being distracted day in and day out, whether it is work or family or relationships, whether it is worries and fears, doubts, whatever it is that comes to distract us, how do we prioritize the will of God? The first point I want to make for prioritizing the will of God is we prioritize the will of God over the flesh. We prioritize God's will over the flesh. Jesus taught this in regards to discipleship in Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, verse 23. I'm going to turn there for a moment. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Prioritizing the will of God over the flesh. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 says, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves take up their cross daily and follow me. Jesus, it is interesting that Jesus doesn't give this this image of discipleship as being maybe the person who preaches the best or the person who leads the best worship or the person who's the most evangelist. He doesn't say that is what a true disciple of mine looks like. Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, you must be willing to first deny yourself Take up your cross daily and follow me. That takes action. That means that that we cannot have passive, mediocre faith and then desire to say that we want to do the will of God or we want to prioritize the will of God. Prioritizing the will of God must first come with prioritizing God's will over self. We must deny self making the will of God our number one pursuit and our focus. As Jesus prayed, not as I will, but as you will, in Matthew 26, 39, we see the posture of our Savior's heart and how he, he, he dealt with encountering God's will. Now, I don't know about you. Every day of my life, I have an opportunity uh, to get in God's word, to sit at God's feet, and to listen for what the Lord wants to say. That's not a pastor thing. That's not because I'm a pastor of a church. That's not because I'm a preacher. That's not because I'm a teacher. That's not because, um, you know, I have, you know, some supernatural love for the word. That is because first and foremost, I'm a son. I am someone who has been redeemed, that my sins have been forgiven, and that I have, my, I have been blot, my, my transgressions have been blotted out just like yours. This idea that it starts with the denying of self. And I would venture to say that many of us who are, who are watching online this morning are struggling with something. You're struggling either with worry and fear and you're not willing to put it to death. You're struggling with worry about your job, worry about your family, worry about the provision, or whatever it is, whatever it is that keeps you from denying self to follow I want to challenge you this morning, and we're going to pray at at the end of this message. I want to challenge you to really take seriously Jesus' command that those that desire to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow. This actually makes us better as believers, as it undoubtedly did for Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 through 16. 1 Timothy Chapter number four, 1 Timothy, chapter number four, verses verses 12 through 16. 1 Timothy, chapter four, verse 12 through 16 says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. 
Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. This idea that the will of God must take priority even over ourself and our personal interest. The second point I want to make about prioritizing the will of God is prioritizing the will of God over family. Jesus taught this in regards to discipleship in several places. In, Ma- in Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 uh, to, through 37, and in Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Let's turn to Matthew 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 to 37. Matthew 10, 34 to 37. And it reads, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to turn a man against his father and a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now, when Jesus writes this, he's not writing this to diminish the role of the family in our faith. Uh, that, is, that is not the point of what Jesus says. In other places, Jesus esteems the children. He commands his disciples not to prevent or not to forsake the children from coming to him. And so he values the role of family in the, in the life of the believer. But when it comes to the will of God, Jesus wants to make clear that prioritizing the will of God must come even over our family. Now, for many of us watching, we, we possibly have been in situations where we've had choices to make, whether we would, we would follow and, and honor the will of the Lord or whether we would follow the pressure and the expectations possibly of our family. And sometimes that can be the most difficult place to be as New Testament Christians, as believers, because we love those relationships, we love those individuals. And yet, We have to be so committed to God and what God has commanded in his word that we make God's will our greatest and single most priority even over our family. Our next point that we want to talk about is God's priority or prioritizing God's will over business. Prioritizing God's will over business. The apostles demonstrated this in answering the call to discipleship. Thus, we must put God's will before any work or business affairs. How will we provide for our families, you might ask? With God's providential help, we see in Matthew chapter 6, we see that God has the ability, just as he clothes the, the lilies of the field and the flowers and the grass, just as he takes care of the birds of the air, God has the ability to provide for you when you honor him and put him first. So that should hopefully give us calm resolve to recognize the fact that we don't have to compromise our faith for a job. We don't have to compromise our faith for our business. Now, you may be wondering, so so what if I work in a situation where I'm not allowed to talk about my faith? Then you let your life be your speech. Let your, your love for people and how you work and how you serve and how you do what you do speak volumes for the glory that comes from Christ and his kingdom. Your testimony, the way you live, the way you interact with your coworkers, the way you do business will speak volumes to a world that is dark and desperately needing light. You don't have to say Jesus. You don't even have to say the Bible, the the, the term Bible. But a life that is changed and transformed by Jesus will always draw people to him. Jesus says, that if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. My last point I want to make when it comes to uh, the will of God 
um, and prioritizing that, that will is we have to prioritize God's will over everything. We have to prioritize God's will over everything. Jesus taught this in regards, again, to discipleship in Luke chapter 14, verse 33. Luke chapter 14, verse 33 says, Luke 14, 33, right here. It says, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything, you cannot be my disciples. Christ asked, whenever Christ dies on the cross for us and he, and he asks us to give our lives to him, he is asking us to give our life, to give everything for him to give our comfort up for him. And so when we prioritize the will of God over everything, over our family, over work, over business, over career, over ourselves, we begin to see God and our faith in him lived out in powerful and supernatural ways. Even when there's a pandemic going on globally, the church becomes anchored in our faith and our confidence and our assurance that God is who he says he is. He is on the throne. He is there. He is available to provide. He promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And for you in your home, for you who who are worried about whatever you're coming into this video worried about, my prayer is for you that you would find that, that secret Seeking God and his kingdom and his righteousness would would completely shatter the tactics and strategies of the enemy that comes to to make you believe that God is not there, that he doesn't hear you, that he doesn't love you, or that God is not able to do what you need him to do during this time. My prayer for you as we end this sermon is, is that you would go into a place of faith and confidence and assurance in that God really is true to his word. He's true to his promise. I want to pray for you really quick. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the power of your spirit, Lord. We thank you that as we as the church, as we redirect our eyes and our focus and our attention on you, Lord, Father, we pray that you would show up and manifest your love, your power, your provision, uh, your peace, your joy in supernatural ways. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the man and the woman, Father, who's watching online this morning. Thank you that, Father, they are the very individual that you desire to make yourself known to. And so, Father, we pray that no matter what they have, no matter what circumstances they find themselves in, that, Father, you would show yourself mighty and powerful and real to them in ways that they cannot imagine. Father, we honor you. We thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us this morning. We pray you have a great week. God bless you. I love you. My family loves you. We're praying for you. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.